I'm just waiting for just set up Jason's okay, tablet. Okay, we'll then we both have it. Okay, start the new jump so we're gonna stop. Yeah, no worries, we'll tell you when to stop. We're ready. So there was a question on the forum about the hacking movements of the DAO and how it doesn't get you killed. 90% of the time it gets you killed. Ha! <laughs> Basically. <laughs> but there's a reason for that. Yeah. It's because most of the time people don't understand what those hacking movements are. I mean, yes, in the army, you probably didn't learn very much and you were just hacking. However, the traditional forums do have some utility. So first we'll demonstrate what the traditional stuff was for and why it's big and hacking. So yeah, this is the stuff that was taught like two armies. And, uh, when I was discussing it on the forum, I talked about how it was generally it was actually against spears. So most broadsword forms, like you see in our drunken broadsword form and stuff like that, this is actually built against the spearman. So if he's got a spear, and I'm stuck, let's, uh, let's go over here so you guys can see. And I'm stuck behind it. First of all, I have to be hyper aggressive. Otherwise, I'm going to be perforated. He's just going to be too fast and he's going to stab me all over the place, right? So all of the big hacking movements and covering movements, you start to be this. I'm just looking for a touch. That's it. I just want to touch Jason's spear. That's all. And then you see what the hacks are for. So the hacks always have a lead hand, right? So I'm looking to grab something so that I can so hack his hands off. So there's our first target a lot of times, right? It's closer than it looks. It's not usually chops. No. But if you can see, that movement is actually running up the blade to take the front hand, which is this. This is these things out of the form, right? So see you now you're fighting, I block, I catch something, boom, boom, thumb gone, right? Right? And then I can just bang and just start hacking them to pieces. So, hyper aggressive, and the offhand is always grabbing at the spear. So if he's attacking basically in any way, I have my shield. So I'm blocking and I'm just trying to not die. That's it. Doesn't matter what Jace does, I'm just gonna try to keep this in a good position. I'm not gonna reach out do stupid things, and I'm going to try to keep touching them. So now as I enter, you see I'm looking for this spear with my hand, especially if I'm probably going to be coming back. Yeah, because he's going to come back after me, right? So he gives it to me, and now here, you're going to see him right on the set. There's this hack that you see in the form, right? That's all soldiering stuff, though. You're not going to wave forward. Because the guy's an idiot. Yeah, he's a total idiot. If you can intimidate him, then yeah, that stuff's great. But it's a, it has a purpose, right? Yeah. And sometimes it is just intimidation. Like, from sparring with weapons, you can really scare people with this. Because it's moving fast and it's heavy. Yeah. It makes a big whistling sound. It'll hurt to get hit with it, right? And, and part, of the, part of the point of all of this is that each weapon has its own attributes, right? And we have to learn and appreciate what they are. That's big and heavy and it looks large visually. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's intimidating just by its very nature, in a sense. But we have to use what it's got. There, it's there for a reason. Which brings us to how martial artists actually use it. So, the drunk broadsword form, from the form, very soldier-like, right? Very soldier-like. Hacking, slashing, stabbing, blocking. But it's basics. Generally speaking, you're going to end up with two hands on this thing because it has a blunt side. Yeah, which is my which is my comment in there about it being a pressing sort of thing. I'll trade you that. Yeah, yeah. So this is a funny shape. This gives you some advantages. It gives you a lot of weight at the end. So if we do chop, we get a lot of power in it, right? But strangely enough, if you run your hand up the blade, something out of a form, but you might stop here, you get something different. So against a heavy weapon, like, well, pretend that's the one now, apparently. Or, you know, get the Nyan down. So, one-handed weapon, right? If he hits me hard, there's no way I can, I can stand up to this. This is, I'm going to only have to be able to pass it, right? So it comes, my only options, one-handed, are, are limited in a sense. However, two-handed, I have a lot of leverage here, more so than if it was just a katana, for example, because I've got this handle. So even against a powerful opponent in a locked up situation, this becomes a pressing weapon where I can just press it inwards, 
constantly, multi-directionally. And that is in some, but not very many, broadsword forms. So we have that particular movement right there. We were able to cover, cover all eight angles just with these two hands, right? So in a sense, yes, we might start long. You know, if I can, if I can pass something and get him, I might play that game. However, I, if we're tight, you know, I'm going to be always pressing and carving inwards on him, right? It's just using this weapon. More how it wants to be used in a funny way. <laughs> and in I don't know if that makes sense. In a way, this is not, it's a spear. Yeah. Like, really? If you look up people fighting in full armor, like full armor, even those long, straight European broadswords, two-handed things, they'll use them like spears. They're trying to press the point into places in the armor, right? And so, in a sense, because you can't stand away. Yeah. Especially if I've got a reach advantage. Like, this is the worst fight in the world for him. Yeah. Right? And he made your trouble here. And all the things that he said earlier still apply, right? If I can get a hand on that, then I'm done. Then we're talking, right? But, but if I'm not an idiot. Oh, yeah. Then these the attacks are going to just disappear, right? Yeah. It's like a robot, it. right? It's going to be extremely hard for Jason to touch. And, and he's got a lot of leverage. Like, he can knock this aside quite easily. Yeah. So I either have to be really strong or I have to be more skilled. So now, once I touch it, even if he's fast, I've got to, I've got to be able to not fence with him. This mm -hmm. is one of the hyper The mistake most people make is like, I'm a broadsword guy. Ah, oh. well, you know, it's like you're trying to fence with it. It's not a fencing weapon. This is like all or nothing. Yeah. Be ready to die, right? So as we're here, if I can draw anything, I'm just on him immediately. Exactly. And I might not get room to slash them, so I have to make power with both hands, right? Stab, stab, here. Now I, I disable the front arm, stab him in the guts, yank it out, and then I can give him that if I want, right? Now that you see the broadsword form when you do stuff like this, yeah, it's the pressing motion, right? That's what, it's kind of a code almost, right? Yeah. It's like a beginner form that's like, oh, but there's other things going on. So if we, for instance, do line that jaw together, Noel. So, right? Yeah, you're doing the Okay. So lan, na, ja. I mean, you can see that's actually a spear, which makes good sense. That makes a lot more sense. And then you have like more events like that. There's a couple of advanced techniques. So blue dragon stirs the water. Is this one, and that's just teaching you. Different angles, like what Jace was doing with the eight directions, right? One direction at a time. So you have blue dragon stirs the water, right? And then you have all of these. The point of mobility, right? You should be able to put this edge or point absolutely anywhere. And think of it, because it's hyper aggressive, hyper aggressive doesn't mean standing up here and chopping into bits like a side of beef hanging two feet away. Hyper-aggressive means I'm going to jump on him and try to frickin' eat him, you know? Hyper-aggressive means this is a close weapon. Part of this hand up here teaches you that your thrusts are coming from this kind of yep. distance. Bang, right? Smash, smash, slash, stab. And if we want to make room, it's because we've already done the damage, right? Exactly. We need to understand that this aggressive means close, right? Close is fast, close is powerful. Close is the, is the very antithesis of what the spear guy wants to see. Same against the Jan. Jan's very mobile, very, uh, you know, very surgical, right? But again, he wants distance. Bang! I'll cut my hand to get in there. So I'm hyper aggressive, right? Get it out of the way, stab him, slash him, all of that. That's why a lot of broadsword forms are named Tiger Tail. Yeah. Like, what happens if you grab a tiger by the tail? <laughs> it eats you. It comes on you and kills you, right? That's the idea, right? You, you, you touch the tiger's tail, it's just going to kill you. That's why it was really good for uh, frontline uh, soldiers, because the very basic idea of this hyper aggressiveness was simple to teach. Yeah, right? And to teach a farmer. And it works with the psychology of the battlefield, right? Really, it's about if you don't do this, you're dead, period. So you better do it. So get on them and just do it. Abandon all hope, yeah. ye who enter here.
Exactly. <laughs> so make sure that, let me just give you a couple of those drills again. Let's get out. Oh, oh yeah, for a second. This is a great broadsword. Yes. Anyway, so this is that blue dragon. Stir the water. Do eight directions, right? Which is the next one. Well, look at, we'll start down. It doesn't matter. Right? Yeah, watch this. Just Otherwise, we'll do it at different times. All eight, right? Eight directions. Down, up, side, side, upward, upward, downward, downward. Bang. Do it with just the sword. And then right. the wrapping exercise. So you've got twines, which are your basics, right? And start doing twining exercises with your hand stuck. And these are really nice because, again, if you make contact with a spear anywhere, he goes for the leg and you get him here. Mm -hmm. How do you clear him over your head and attack, right? So these exercises are so nice for that mobility of getting anything that's got contact here to other parts of the body, passing them safely around you, right? So that's, I mean, that's where advanced broadsword 